Welcome to another physio video. Today let's talk about electricity in cells. The study of how cells conduct electricity is known as electrophysiology. This video is part one and discusses the resting membrane potential and the action potential. Think of your senses. Sensory receptors located throughout your body will transduce different forms of energy like light waves or sound waves or mechanical en energy from touch into electricity that can be transmitted by neurons to the brain. An electrical signal sent toward the central nervous system is known as an afferent signal. The brain receives afferent electrical signals and interprets them as important information about our internal and external environment. The brain also sends electrical signals out to control muscles and glands. Additionally, our thoughts and personalities are all possible because of the electrical capabilities of our brains. Electrical signals traveling from the brain to effectors such as muscles to cause contraction for movement and to glands for secretion are known as efferent signals. Hopefully you can see how important electrical signals transmitted along neurons are for both sensory and motor functions in the body. But what about neurons makes it possible for them to transmit electricity? Let's take a neuron and blow up part of it so that we can see how the proteins embedded in its plasma membrane make this possible. The main players that make electricity possible are potassium leak channels, sodium potassium pumps, negatively charged proteins, sodium voltage gated channels, and potassium voltage gated channels. Let's talk about how each of these is important for sending electrical signals. If we position an oscilloscope or voltmeter with the recording electrode inside the cell and the reference electrode outside the cell, a potential difference of about minus 70 millivolts is recorded for the neuron. It is a negative number because the inside of the cell is negative compared to the outside of the cell. The inside being negative is an important characteristic that allows neurons to send electrical signals. Three main players are involved in making the inside of the cell negative. First, negatively charged proteins are made inside the cell and become trapped, making the inside more negative. Secondly, the sodium potassium pump uses ATP to pump three sodium ions out of the cell for every two potassium ions it pumps into the cell. This pump moves more positive ions out of the cell compared to positive ions brought into the cell. This imbalance of charge movement due to the pump contributes about 15 millivolts of the total 70 millivolt potential difference. The sodium potassium pump also creates gradients since sodium is pumped out, the concentration for sodium becomes higher outside the cell compared to inside the cell. Potassium is pumped into the cell, so the concentration for potassium becomes higher inside the cell. In addition to the negatively charged proteins in sodium potassium pumps, leak channels for potassium are also very important to allow the inside of the cell to be negative compared to the outside. Since potassium is higher inside compared to outside, it will diffuse from high to low down a chemical gradient. Remember that potassium is a positive ion and the more that goes down its chemical gradient and leaves the cell, the more negative the inside of the cell will become. The inside becoming more negative will attract more of the positive potassium ion back into the cell. The attraction back into the cell is due to an electrical gradient. Together, both gradients form the electrochemical gradient. They are opposing forces. One is a force out of the cell, 
and the other is a force into the cell. When the amount of potassium leaving is equal to that coming into the cell, equilibrium is reached, and this is known as the resting membrane potential, or RMP. The RMP is approximately minus 70 millivolts for neurons. Do you recall the three main players that allow the inside of the cell to be negative and establish the resting membrane potential? They are negatively charged proteins, the sodium potassium pumps, and the potassium leak channels. Now let's talk about voltage gated channels. These channels include the sodium voltage gated channels and the potassium voltage gated channels. These channels allow an electrical signal to travel the length of the neuron. We call these traveling electrical signals action potentials. The sodium voltage gated channels have two gates, an activation gate on the outside of the cell membrane and an inactivation gate on the inside of the membrane. Potassium voltage gated channels just have one gate located on the outside of the cell membrane. How do the voltage gates open to generate an action potential? Here's an example of how an action potential may be triggered. You are examining Santa Claus's sore back. When you touch his back, you have applied a mechanical stimulus to touch receptors in the skin on Santa's back. The stimulus increases the permeability of the membrane to certain cations like calcium. Calcium will go from high to low and rush into the cell. The neuron was resting at minus 70. But now, since calcium came into the cell, and calcium has a positive charge, the RMP will go up a little bit. If the stimulus is large enough to reach threshold, sodium voltage gated channels will open, bringing about an action potential that will travel the length of the neuron. Also note the graphical represent representation of the action potential. When the signal makes it to Santa's brain, he becomes consciously aware he is being touched. So when the cell is at rest and not sending signals, the RMP has been established by sodium potassium pumps, leak channels, and negatively charged proteins. RMP simply means that the inside of the cell is negative at rest. And notice that the sodium and potassium voltage gates are closed at rest. Remember that in order to get an action potential, first we must have an excitatory stimulus that will bring the membrane potential to threshold. The example we gave was a mechanical stimulus that increased calcium permeability, allowing calcium to enter the cell and make the inside of the cell more positive, allowing threshold to be reached. This stimulus is called an excitatory graded potential. When we get to threshold, the activation gate on the sodium channel opens and the potassium voltage gate starts to open, but opens slowly. Fully open sodium channels will allow much more sodium to enter the cell compared to the amount of potassium that is allowed to leave. The positively charged sodium ions entering the cell will make the membrane potential more positive. This phase on the action potential graph is called the depolarization phase. At around zero, near the end of the depolarization phase, the inactivation gate closes so sodium can no longer enter the cell. By this time, the potassium voltage gate is fully open and lots of potassium goes down its gradient 
and leaves the cell. As the positively charged potassium leaves the cell, the membrane potential becomes more negative. This phase of the action potential is called the repolarization phase. After repolarization, sodium voltage gates have returned to their original configuration that they had at rest. The activation gate is now closed and the inactivation gate is open. Hyperpolarization is the inside of the cell becoming even more negative than minus 70 millivolts due to the potassium channels closing slowly. After the potassium voltage gated channel is completely closed, the cell returns to minus 70 millivolts resting membrane potential. Once again, the cell is only permeable to potassium through the potassium leak channels and the sodium potassium pump is always working to maintain the sodium and potassium gradients. A gradient means that there is an area where it is high and where it is low. Please remember the potassium is high inside the cell and sodium is high outside the cell. In summary, please be able to answer two questions. First, what three main things bring about the resting membrane potential? If you answered negatively charged proteins, sodium potassium pumps, and potassium leak channels, you are correct. Second, what two main channels allow for an action potential? If you answered sodium voltage gated channels and potassium voltage gated channels, you are correct. This concludes part one of the video series on electrophysiology. Please join us now for part two as we discuss circumstances that can change the resting membrane potential. Thanks for watching.